Hey, how's it going? This is Matt with Smog Tip Video 2, my second video so far. Alright, so it's basically your OBD2 system. 96 and newer car and light duty trucks are going to have OBD2. And let's get started. This is basically for engine diagnostic, emission failures with no mill, no code set and those pesky monitors that don't ever run. And basically we're going to go through what OBD2 is, generic, and what OEA, OE side is, the OEM side. So there's two different sides of a computer on a 96 and above car OBD2. There is the generic, which has 10 modes, and then there's the OE side. Now basically, every cheap scan tool like this is going to be a generic scan tool and they're going to only do the generic side which is cool because the generic side is really cool now if you want to do the OE side you're going to need an OE type scan tool snap-on which is both generic and OE but they're very expensive so let's just go forward on the generic so basically there's 10 modes Mode 1 is where all your monitors are. If you know what a monitor is, you'll know that those things don't like to set. And basically, they're all monitors are in there. Continuous monitors are your fuel, comprehensive, and misfire. Mode 2 is freeze frame. And these are where all the first trip codes go in. Mode 3 is current confirmed DTC which is your mill light turns on your check engine light these are the second codes so the second code will go in to your mode 3 turn your mill light on and then the first time that code set would go into your freeze frame now mode 4 is cleared emission related data that's with your scan tool you clear the codes but you just don't clear the codes, you also clear the monitors, which a lot of people don't understand. And freeze frame, but it cannot clear mode A, which is mode 10, permanent codes, and we'll get to that in a second. Mode 5 is O2 test results, and these are for non-CAN cars. So all cars 2008 above are certified CAN, not not always always there's no always in the automotive field but you could rely 2008 are all can there might be can cars before that and basically basically um, mode 5 is really not there not a lot of manufacturers support it mode 6 is the the helpful uh, diagnostic help mode and it's continuous monitors like the O2, the the converter, the EGR, the air pump, the O2 heater, and EVAP. Now mode 7 is the pending codes. Monitors that have failed the first trip. Some codes that are not emission related. So those are going to be in the generic side because all emission related codes will turn on the light. Mode 7 is bi-directional control. Super cool. You can turn things on and off. But generic, the generic side does not have it. Never required by the EPA. This would be on the OE side. Snap on. Snap on or uh, the manufacturer scan tool will turn things on and turn them off. It's real cool. And then mode 9. Mode 9 is request vehicle information which is pretty cool. It'll, it'll communicate the VIN to the the BAR 97 or the OIS smog machine. And um, 2005 all have it. So the first three years, 96, 97, 98, not necessarily 99, maybe half 99, will not communicate the VIN to the, e, the BAR 97. So just, you know, FYI. Now basically, here's a little monitor help. Non-CANS cars use hexadecimals. And they use this code right here, the TID and the SID. And they basically tell you the mode six 
diagnostic, but these these TIDs and SIDs will tell you what monitor failed. These are the ID number for the monitor. And you would have to go to uh, all data or the manufacturer to find out what mode it is with this code. It's a little confusing, but once you see this and after hearing this video, you'll understand where to find it. All data and the manufacturer side will have it and it'll tell you what monitor it is and then a drive cycle very important running monitors is the drive cycle and keep alive memory very important you have a problem with your keep alive memory circuit every time you turn your car off you reset the computer so that's definitely important and then you got your default numbers 0255 six five five three five those are default numbers if you see those that monitor has failed that monitor is not working properly all right so let's go with this cheap harbor freight scan tool and uh, let's turn it on Oop, let me push power get you a good view then we're gonna go to diagnostics and go to obd2 and that's mode one right off the bat we see mode one and it says zero so I don't want to erase I don't know why it asked me that every time and we're gonna go to the first thing you check on any car that you're working on or buying this is perfect if you're buying a car and then we'll say this drive cycle and see how it didn't run this drive cycle and complete and complete that's no big deal it just didn't run it I couldn't run it because of the criteria right there drive cycle criteria I didn't go fast enough it wasn't cold enough whatever so let's go back and we'll go since the computer has been cleared and look everything says okay so if you saw a non-complete on this side, you'd be like, okay, why is it non-complete? You know, did someone try to clear this light so I don't see a check engine light? And then you'll investigate further. So exit this. Exit this. And we're going to go to mode 6. Onboard monitor. This is our mode 6 test. And this is a Mitsubishi Mirage. Enter that bad boy. And there we go. Monitors. Let's do our favorite catalyst monitor. And we'll put yes. And uh, that's pretty much it. says status okay. Don't need to look at it again. That's it. The second you see okay, go get But there is one exception. See the max numbers? 0.348. And our test was 0 0.031. Now, if that was close to the max, then you might want to note on the VIR, mode 6, catalyst, close to max. Save your ass for a customer returning with a check engine light, which is not, and this is a hexadecimal. This is where, if it's a non-CAN car, you would have to look at all data to find out what mode you're looking at. But lucky for me, this is a CAN car. So it's much easier. And then we can go with EVAP. And go with exhaust gas, misfire, all these cool monitors. And that's our mode six. That's the second part you are going to look in if you have a problem with the mission failure or um, monitors. And now we're going to go to, yes, we're going to exit. And then we're going to go back in here. And we're going to look at our mode 9 test. The middle is off. No, I don't want to erase it. Read codes. And then we're going to go to our permanent codes. And no permanent codes. Now mode 9 is very important. Because this is this is a code that someone has cleared. And, will, and can never go away. So, But mode 9 is only on cars... 2010 and up and you know some can cars so 2008 so you're not looking at every car 
has mode 9, but it's good to know that mode 9's there. And it's a smoking gun if someone's messing around, clearing check engine lights, trying to sell their car, and stuff like this. Now my favorite, my second favorite scan tool, let's get this OBD2 connector out. Yeah. It's this Bluetooth. I bought this for $10 on eBay. Now you just plug it in. There we go. Lights flashing. And then you go to your phone and you download the Torque App Pro, which is an awesome program. Hey, there's some more hexadecimals. And now this is a non-can car. This is a customer's car. And he had, I know, he had uh, two uh, warm-up cats that were bad. And these failed right here. Max was 512, and it's in the 32,000. And see, if I didn't know if there were cats, there's the tit and the sid. I would have to look that up at the manufacturer's web for all data. I wish I could see it better. And basically, this is a can car, and I'll show you why a can car is so awesome. Let's get out of pictures. We'll go to my Torque App Pro. I downloaded this app for about six bucks, and then that Bluetooth OBD2 reader, ten bucks. So this can tool is about sixteen dollars, which is awesome. Totally awesome. Now it's communicated. The car went solid, and then I'm going to go to my test results. This is my mode 6 test, and there they are. I love this program. It's all in green, and basically, it'll tell you every, because it's a can car, it'll tell you what it is and what's passed. O2 bank 1, sensor 1. And it's just an awesome program. Awesome program. And that's not all. It can check codes, engine fault. Hit the little guy, loading up. And it's thinking. It's thinking. 37%. It's kind of it's kind of slow, but come on. $16, best scan tool on earth. It's thinking, it's thinking, 93, 94, oh, and it tells me what I already know. There's no codes. And let's see what else it'll do. And it says, it shows a lot of things, but you can graph PIDs. And you could do a line chart. We'll do it fast because this is a fast computer. And we'll go over here. And we're going to look at air fuel ratio. Air fuel ratio. And we're going to push play. And it's telling me my air fuel ratio right in front of me. And then when I give it gas, the air fuel ratio will go down. And that's because more fuels being burnt and it's just an awesome program i definitely recommend this program i definitely recommend this obd2 reader it's a little complicated to use compared to the torque app 2 and it costs eight times as much but that's my video thanks for watching guys and this is my second video and i hope it helpful and I probably confused you, so keep learning about 10 modes. And um, yeah, remember that, you know, there's generic and there's the OE side. So just remember that there's two different sides. And if you get the snap-on scan tool, you'll be able to access both sides. Bi-directional controls are a lot of fun. And at some point, I'm going to get that awesome scan tool and turn things on like the fan or like run the evap monitor or all little stuff like that there's a lot more you could turn the window motors on you could roll down the windows all this little stuff that's kind of cool 
So yeah, thanks again. Bye.